Now we're going to take a closer look at what happened in this previous lesson. So uh, we now need to look at threads and cores. Alpaca threads are somewhat different from P threads, standard threads from a C++ library, OpenMP threads, CUDA threads, and so on. An alpaca thread just means that you are executing a command sequence. A command sequence is a shorter name for an algorithm that is performed on a single data element. We also call this kernel. Uh, cores, on the other hand, are physical execution units, and cores are capable of executing alpaca threads. For example, if you have an AMD Threadripper CPU, you might have 64 CPU cores if you are in the high-end model line. If you have an NVIDIA Tesla V100 GPU, you will have more than 5,000 CUDA cores at your disposal. Threads are mapped to cores, which means that they are running on a concrete core. And while they are running, a single thread is only executed by exactly one core. It doesn't happen that a single thread is executed by multiple cores in parallel. However, threads may be rescheduled, and after rescheduling, they may run on other cores. For example, if a thread goes into a waiting state because it needs to wait for memory access, for example, it will make room for another thread that's actually ready. And once the first thread becomes ready again, it may run on another core. In a usual scenario, you will have many more threads than cores launched. This is also called oversubscription. And this is exactly for this purpose, so that if you have a thread that is waiting for something, it can get scheduled off the core, and another thread that's actually ready can uh, run on the core again. A set of cores is called a device. A single core can only belong to exactly one device, which is an end-to-one -end mapping, and uh, it, it won't happen that a core belongs to two different devices. All cores on the device have access to the device's global memory, and uh, Alpaca devices are basically a representation of physical devices. We're going to go into more detail here on Thursday. Just for an example, if you have an AMD Threadripper CPU with 64 CPU cores, this will probably be an Apaka device with 128 cores. 128 cores because you probably have simultaneous multi-threading enabled in your BIOS. This is a hardware feature. Uh, if you have an NVIDIA Tesla V100, you will have more than 5,000 CUDA cores and also an Apaka device with more than 5,000 cores. Then there's the concept of the host. An alpaca host is basically the controller of the overall program flow or just the program from where you launch the devices. An alpaca device, on the other hand, executes the kernels and thus accelerates specific parts of the program. All devices are attached to a single host, and it is impossible to have more than one host at once. In an alpaca program, there's exactly one host with a number of devices attached to it. Now let's uh, try to play around with the parallelism in Alpaca a bit. We're going to edit the source code of our Hello World example now. So I'm going to the source directory here. And uh, now we open the Hello World source code in our favorite editor, which should always be Vim. And uh, as you can see, there are quite a lot of comments here that explain what's happening uh, more detailed than I can on the slides. I've omitted these comments in the slide code. So now we're going to line 73, and we're going to change the number of threads here. So uh, you can see three different numbers here, blocks per grid, threads per block, and elements per thread. Don't worry about this just now. We're going to explain this in more detail later. For now, all you need to know is that changing the number from 8 to 16 here in line 73 will also change the number of our parallel threads from 8 to 16. Going to exit and going back to the build directory. And now we can build the whole thing again. Uh, 
And if we execute it again, we are going to see that the number of threads has changed to 16 threads in parallel. And again, if we execute it twice, the thread order will have changed. So this is what just what happened here in uh, a couple of bullet points on the slide. We went to line 73 and changed the number of threads. Again, don't worry about the terminology right now. We're going to explain that later. And uh, then we went back to the build directory, rebuilt the executable and executed it. Great, so now we have uh, increased the number of Alpaca threads by just changing one line of code. And uh, that's it for this part of the lesson. Are there any questions to what happened in the previous few slides? Okay, looks like it's all clear. Then we'll proceed to the next lesson.